Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different, so not driving this time, but taking pictures. Or, well, taking pictures, I'm not sure if that's how you describe it, but in essence this is content creation for sim racing. So it's a, a really big area that I think some of the big teams, some of the top teams, some of the good media teams uh, are really taking big advantage of this of late um, it's a big emerging trend and you definitely need to be on board if you want to grow your profile as a driver your profile as a team be legitimate legitimize sim racing all of those good things uh, you need to be able to do this it's, it's such a simple thing but it makes such a massive difference to the content and to the legitimacy of everything that you do on social media in relation to sim racing so having said that taking pictures of fake cars. Um, how hard can it be? Well, it's not that easy. There's a there's a few a few little tricks um, that make it a lot easier. Uh, first of which, obviously, um, perhaps obviously, is your graphic settings in game. Turn those all the way up. Now, before you do that, if you if you like me, run a relatively low graphic setting when you're racing. Make sure you back up. There's a couple of files in your iRacing documents folder. I think there are app.ini and dx11renderer.ini. I'll put them on screen. I think that's correct. Um, take a backup of those. Put them in an archive in that same folder, and name it something like racing, uh, racing graphics or whatever. Um, because what you don't want to do is change all of your graphic settings, make them look pretty, and then you then you jump in to do a race and you get five FPS, uh, which is no good. So in my folder I've got two archives, I've got a photo mode version and a racing mode and whenever I want to do either of those things I just extract that archive, overwrite the files that are already in that folder and I'm good to go, dead easy. So having done that you've now got a lovely nice looking iRacing and in, and in my instance I get about 20 FPS. Um, but it doesn't matter because you're taking a still picture so who cares how much FPS you have. Um, so first things first camera angles. Now it's all well and good to choose TV1 or TV2 or whatever but they're a bit naff really. Like If I hit print screen now and use that as my picture it's it's gonna look crap. So what you need to do first of all is I have a, a replay here of Circuit of the Americas from the BSRTC. Generally you want to find part of the track that looks good so it might be that it's the one of the striking features of the track so here turn one the circuit of the America's the big uphill rise before the really tight left hander that's probably probably the most iconic part of the track for me anyway if, if someone says uh, Kota or circuit of the America's that's the thing that I remember of it first um, similarly with Spa um, I'm sure I don't need to tell you which part of the track that everyone knows um, you know Brands Hatch turn one it's there's, there's places on every track that you that you see it and you recognise it and that's a good place to start when you're looking for where to take your picture. Um, so we can start with Turn 1, Circuit of the Americas. First thing I'll always do, choose the chase cam and if you've never used it before this is like a revolution. But if you hold Control and hit F12 you get this camera edit menu and as it, as it says on the tin it allows you to edit the cameras and do whatever you like which is fantastic. So, a couple of tips. Static FOV. Oh, zoom, that's interesting. I've never, I never used zoom. But generally, the more zoomed in you are on something, the better it'll look. Now that's a, that's quite a sweeping term. There are obviously exceptions. Static field of view. Generally, the lower the better. There are there are situations where that might not be true, but uh, oh well. Second part of the trick: um, blurry backgrounds, motion blur, or depth of field is really cool. It makes things look a whole lot more real. Um, and a really good trick to do that is to use a static aim camera. Choose your let's, right. So let's start framing this shot. So interesting things we want in our image. I think already that's looking quite cool. It looks a little bit odd because it, it kind of seems like the car's floating a little. So things I want to try and get in it, that, that scoreboard tower, whatever you want to call it, 
that's quite cool. Aperture. So aperture is, uh, it's the, these are going to be a really bad description, it's the part of the lens of a camera that lets light in. Is that correct? Maybe. So it's, it's the size of the hole that lets light in more specifically. And the bigger that hole, steady, um, the bigger that hole the more light gets in but also the depth of field gets shorter and there's a bunch of physics reasons that I'm not, not going to pretend I'm intelligent enough to understand but the smaller the number, the smaller aperture number, the more depth of field, no, sorry, the less depth of field that you get and the more pronounced the depth of field effect is. So if I change, it's very, a little bit hard to see if we just change this manual focus a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's a good example. So I've managed to get the, if you see the car in the foreground is in focus and the background is very blurry, if I change that aperture now to a really high value or a really small aperture then everything comes back into focus so that's a that's a good one to to use to make things look better and already that's a quite a nice looking picture um, there's a few a few principles of photography that really come in handy the rule of thirds is important so if you were to split your image up into thirds um, as I will as I will demonstrate on the screen what you want is your your interesting parts of your image to be where either the lines of the thirds lie or where the intersections lie, the intersections particularly. Um, again, there's a I'm sure there's some sort of scientific -y reason as as why that is a thing, um, but it's it makes pictures look better. It's it's potentially to do with the way that the eye looks at the picture and it draws you around the image. There's all of this guff that I, I, again I won't pretend to understand, but. Um, but it is what it is and it works so I think I've managed somehow to stumble upon an image that I'm reasonably happy with straight away am I happy with this? one eternity later so I think this will probably serve as a good enough example many hours later Okay, so, having spent far too much time trying to get a picture I'm happy with, another thing that's important is spotting opportunities. So just it so just so happens at this particular point in the replay, as I'm hitting that curb and I'm up onto the two wheels, there's another team car behind. Um, obviously, if you're if you're doing media generation for a team purpose, then that's that's a really good shot. You've got more than one team car uh, in the image. It, it just looks good, it looks cool, it looks like it was planned almost. Um, and you've got twice the amount of twice the amount of eyes on your sponsors in your same image. Which in business it's like buy one get one free. So I think I am happy with that as an image. I've said that multiple times already, but this is what I'm going to go with. So, um, I'm sure there is an actual screenshot, save screenshot button, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to hold Alt and hit print screen. And that is my picture now. Okay, so Alt and print screen, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, essentially when you hold Alt, it focuses the print screen on the window that you have selected. Um, so, in my case, I've got two screens uh, at the moment, two screens connected. So, I've got another one over there in the corner that is my fourth screen when I'm racing. Um, if I just hit print screen I'm going to get that full thing and I've got two images and it's, it's not nice. So if you just hold on hit print screen you get the, the single one that you've got in focus which is dead handy. Um, and here we are. So I'm in Photoshop. Um, other image editors are available but and a big but I think Photoshop is by far the best. It's you know it's, I'm, I'm out of the game for, for quite a long time in terms of media stuff but um, back then and I'm pretty sure still now it's just the industry standard for for this sort of stuff for photo manipulation for really fine grain control there are various other things out there that do similar they give you filters and things that look cool and it's dead easy and that's great really low effort good you know low effort high reward stuff but nothing really gives you the the impact like Photoshop does and I've just realized that I've missed a crucial step so 
static camera, fixed position. Here's my image, I've taken a picture of that, that's fine. Now without changing any of those other settings, I'm going to find a point on the replay where there are no cars in this from, in the from frame. There's one. And I need to change this near plane bias. And also I need to change the focus because it's gone out of focus. Why is that? That's because my car isn't in the shop. So, well, I can use this to my advantage. It means I don't have to do an, another blur. Um, essentially, what I'm doing is I'm having two images. I've got the one with the cars on. Then we're going to cut those cars out and have them as our foreground image. And we're going to have the background with the blur and the cool effects. And when you stitch those two together, you've got a really nice looking image. So that's going to be my background there. You've got some nice depth of field. That looks cool. Let's do another alt print screen of that. Paste. Oops. There we go. So. It's going well. So there's my two pictures. So before we start doing any sort of colorization -y effects, um, we just need to get our image as we want it. Now a couple of things that I'm not particularly keen on here. Unfortunately, the iRacing logo is going to need to go. So we're going to use this clone stamp tool. This is amazing in Photoshop. And essentially, when you hold Alt, uh, you choose a part of the image where you're going to clone from. So we're just going to, you know, what we want to replace is this iRacing image. Um, so we're going to look for something that looks similar to whatever's behind that, which is just racetrack. So if we click somewhere on the racetrack over here and then start drawing, it draws, as you can see, the cursor on the left. Whatever is at that point, it redraws it on the right. Now this is not foolproof, you need a bit of experience doing this and a bit of practice to make things look as they should, otherwise it, it's, it's quite obvious that it's been manipulated. So I'm just going to slowly blend this in, I mean this is a, I would probably describe this as a reasonably advanced technique, you know this is, this is proper photo manipulation technique sort of stuff. Um, and there we go straight away, our image is gone, it's not not totally accurate because that curb has also been deleted but I ain't going to miss it. So, now, what we want to do is to cut out our cars, so if we select the layer that's got our cars on and the polygonal, pol polygonal, pol whatever that says, however you say it essentially gives you a click by click Deling. selection so we're going to click around our car now this is one of those things that the more time you take to do this well the better the result will be and you can't go back and redo this once you're halfway through putting all the finishing touches on your image if you suddenly spot something that looks a bit naff and you wish oh, I wish I'd have Spend a bit more time doing that. Well, you, no, it's too late. So spend the time doing this. Try and do it accurately. Uh, a common thing that I sometimes fall into in this is uh, a double click, either too fast or without moving the mouse a sufficient space. Uh, Photoshop thinks that you want it to auto complete the shape. So I'll do an example of that here. If I was going to move that, and oh, I've double clicked by accident. It's drawn a hideous line through my car, and it's only in half the selection. Um, in the past, I used to think that that was that was done, and I have to start again. But actually, if you just hold Shift, that adds an area to the selection. So if you pick it back up where you left off, once you start clicking, you can let go of Shift, and then continue around the rest of your shape. Now something that's reasonably important when you get down to this level of the image where you've got shadows involved you want to you want to add a little bit onto that selection where you've got shadows because otherwise that will bite you in the ass and it's very tricky to recreate shadows 
ask me how I know that. But what we don't want is this part in the background. So if we do a, a really tight selection around the edge of the splitter of the car, which is actually a little bit bent. Whoops. Uh, oh, am I going in too far? Another handy tip if you press delete and not escape, make sure you press delete. That goes back across the clicks that you've just done. So if you do one that you're not happy with, dead easy to get it back. All right, and let's just leave a little bit above that shadow. Um, and we can manually blow that out and fade that in. Now, always key to remember when you've got shapes, uh, when you've got wangs. Make sure you cut out the inside of your wangs. There we go. And we do have the inside of the car as well. So let's really quickly whiz through the back of here. Luckily the roll cages and everything in this um, in iRacing aren't particularly high polygon counts. So they're you know, generally you can get around most of it with three or four clicks per ship. Nice and easy. A little bit there. If you've got a part, see under under where my mouse is here. I'm just going to point to my screen then, like an idiot. Um, th this part you can see through, but it's pretty much all the same colour, and there's there's not going to be any any reason to try and blur that because it's going to look the same. Equally with this bit that I'm just selecting there now, that's a completely flat colour. So there's no point in blurring that because you blur a completely flat colour and you get a, the same flat colour. So there's no point in putting the effort into that bit. I think. That is everything that I wanted to pull out. Let's just have a quick scan find. So once you've done that, control C, copy, control V, paste. Now nothing will immediately change, but what I've got now is my car on a toggleable layer in front of my background. Um, so straight away you've got that depth of field effect, it looks really cool. Looks a little bit inaccurate because you've got the road down here that's still out of focus, but the car that's in focus. Um, that's something that we'll need to change um, and probably what I'll do while I'm at this point is just to copy this part of the road all of this bit that we want to be in focus I'm going to copy that we'll go roughly around here deselect the car copy that as well so now if I toggle that on and off the road goes in and out of focus. Good. Always useful in Photoshop to put things in groups and layers. Uh, so this is the car foreground layer. Now this doesn't this doesn't do anything for your image in terms of making it look better, but what it does do is just keep things organized and make things easier. Because you can toggle full groups on and off. Which is very handy. Um, now what we're going to do is go back and select the car in the background. Okay, so this doesn't have to be exact because we're going to blur. We're going to re-blur this to match the other blur on the image. So let's just go around that dead, dead badly, dead badly. And now uh, we want this to be blurred the same as the rest of the image. So if we go to filter and to let's try a Gaussian blur. Oh, it's disappeared. That's great. Turn that down till it starts to come back. And we should probably be using a lens blur here, but they're a little bit more complicated to set up properly. I think we'll probably get away with that. What all we want to do is to make it blend in. Now, when I select it around the outside of the car, that gives me a really clear. Um, thing to compare. So as we turn this up and they start to match, essentially you just keep turning it up until it you know you can no longer see that hard border around the edge, which is probably about there. Yeah, I think that looks you know we toggle that on and off, that's about the same. Um, and what we can do just to blend it a little bit better is take a big brush, lower the opacity, make that a bit smaller. If we just flash that on and off, you can see the things that change and where the edges are. If you just give that a few little magic rubs in those areas, again, a lot of this just comes down to practice and to to be using using Photoshop quite a lot. But there we go. Now that's 
if I'm honest, the background's probably a little bit more blurred than I originally wanted because that team car in the background now is a lot less of a team car and you certainly don't have two for the price of one on sponsors, but it, it still looks cool. I think just by the colours and by the shape of the liveries you can tell that they're related, can you? So, um, good, so there's our, there's our blurred image. Now, what we need to decide is whether or not we can we can get away with or if we want to do any motion blur. So, motion blur. Is this actually going to add anything to the image? I think because we've got a reasonably flat angle on the car, adding that motion blur on top of an already blurred thing doesn't really do anything good for the image, I don't think. So we're not going to do that in this instance. Okay, so there's our image. Um, it looks okay. A couple of things that I like to do are a vignette, if that is how you say it. Uh, right, so make a new layer, fill the whole thing black, grab this elliptical marquee tool, start in one corner, drag to the other corner, hit, uh, actually, select, modify, feather, pick a number, 20, Get a little bit of blur. And as you can see, that looks amazing, right? No, it, it doesn't. Um, and what we just want to do is blur this a lot. If you've ever seen something like Rare Spot TV, when they have their intro graphics with their, uh, their UI, or whatever you want to call it, the, like the scoreboards and all of that, they have one of these on the background, and it looks really cool. It's such a classic effect. It just adds a lot of drama to your image. Um, when you've done that you want to make sure that you go into the middle and ensure that you aren't darkening parts of the image that you don't want to darken. So we just want a healthy amount of that. I think that looks that looks much better already. Just adds a bit of focus to the image. Really really draws your eye in. That's fine. Uh, I don't know how it's building yet, so I'm just going to type a blurry goodness. Um, so at this point, I think I'm probably ready to do some colouring. Yes. Now, in the description below, I will put this set of actions. Um, I think it's good. I like it. It's kind of an Instagram-y sort of look thing. It's not it's not completely as good as Instagram filters, as much as it pains me to say that as someone who's been into photography and bespoke image editing for a long time, Instagram is is good. It's it's really easy to use and you get some really nice results of it. Now this is sort of a replica. Um what I like about this one in particular is that you can hit render all, hit that go button. And what it's going to go do is it's going to render all of these filters one by one and put each of them in a folder. Now this doesn't modify your original, original images or layers or folders or whatever underneath. Um, there are some filters that will do that so you'll apply the filter and it will change the actual image underneath which isn't good if you want to again go back and change things, toggle filters, you can't do that. This one adds layers over the top so you can add, subtract, change the opacity of each of these um, and really fine-tune the sort of look that your image gets which is really powerful um, so that's going to take a minute or so to work its way through those so through the magic of video editing is that magic? I don't know um, now I've got all of these layers that I can toggle on and change and look at and compare and combine crucially Uh, to really shape the sort of image that I want. Now it depends on what your goals are. Um, if you are just posting an image on in, on Instagram, for example, and it's just the image, um, you don't want something too crazy like that because it it looks a bit odd. Um, but if you're overlaying text, you're doing some sort of design, you're advertising something, an event or a, a specific race, then that sort of stuff's cool because it gives a reasonably flat image that you can then put text over and the text will really stand out. Um, 
but your background also still looks really cool. Uh, in this instance, I am just going to do the image. We're not going to add anything on top. So, what we don't want is one of these filters that makes it look really bright. So let's find something nice and dark. Okay, so that's nice and dark, so I'm going to keep that one on. And we want something that looks quite nice in terms of colours. That looks nice. Let's see, another, the, the good thing again about these filters is that you can change the opacity of each one just to really suit the sort of image that you're looking for now. We're starting to get somewhere. You can even go into these and toggle on and off the specific layers if you so wish to really fine tune what's going on. Starting to like that as a picture. Um, now it might be that when you get to this point, actually, there's some more things I want to add. So let's say, for example, I want to turn the lights on on this car. So let's grab a paintbrush. First layer that actually looks alright. Generally, what you want to do is build this up. So I've got one there, and then I'll add a, a bigger one over the top of it. I'll just chin this. Maybe you want it to be slightly yellow. Uh, handy thing when you're using this this bar across the bottom, again I've pointed at my screen, you're not sat next to me so you can't see that but this bar across the bottom here gives you an indication of the sort of colour you're dealing with just really handy handy little touch, one of those little things that just sets Photoshop aside from the rest and you can untick this preview button so we have normal these quite white lights maybe even blue might look cool Yes, I think it does. What we can do is have hints of both. So this one underneath, the smaller, more focused light, let's add an even more smaller, even more focused light. We'll have some yellow in there and see how that looks. Oh, it looks hideous. every light bulb it's not just a big glow you do have a very very bright center so make sure you do that color that bit in where the actual bulb is and then there we go straight away it actually looks like the lights are on now you've got the glow that is being emitted from the light and the actual light so um, there's probably plenty more I could do to this but as a comparison, uh, you know, I said to keep the originals. I think this is the original. So if we just drag this up to the top, all of these layers that are hidden, we'll just delete those, get them out of the way. Thank you, but don't need you anymore. Great. So there's our new image, and that's what we started with. much nicer. So forgive me I'm learning at the same time I've done this this particular thing for a long time but if we've made a new layer underneath and um, we've got all of this above that we want to merge and then edit as a whole make a new layer underneath hit image apply image make sure blending is set to normal there layers merged hit OK and now you've got a single layer with all of that on so if I hide all of this stuff I've got my one image my truth that can then make overall adjustments, so if you want to do things like levels just bring that up a little bit a bit more contrast you know, really 
fine tune the look of your image. There are plenty of other things in here. You can do photo filters in Photoshop. Kind of supposed to replicate um, glass filters back in the day. Sort of works, sort of doesn't. Um, color balance, you can do some color tuning. You know, all of, all of that sort of good stuff. I might actually no, let's leave it like that. Um, and finally, one uh, one thing that's good to do is to resize your image smaller. Now, this is a bit of a hack if you've not got as good of a spec computer and you can't turn everything up and make it look really nice. Um, obviously, what this does do is reduce the resolution of your image. So, if you need something that's HD, 1080p, or whatever. Um, you can't do this, but if you're happy with like a 720p image, um, I'm just going to copy this into a new document. So, worked. Copy. Yep. Copy it into a new document. Image size uh, 1280 if you're happy with like 720p. Um, these resample image uh, choices are. very different. Um, again, I'm not going to try and understand what is behind each of them. I'm pretty sure that this is the one that I used to use when doing this. So if you now duplicate that layer, filter, sharpen, just alter the opacity of that, you get a really nice sharp crisp image. If we compare that to the, the full size one, it looks okay but you can tell it's a game but we, as soon as you start to compress that you start to lose some of those jagged edges and it just looks a little bit nicer and makes it pop a little bit more um, so there we go that's that's my picture um, I'm reasonably happy with that it's not perfect it's not framed perfectly but as an example for this video of how to turn something that looks you know, pretty, uh, my pretty uninspiring and pretty crap. There are, um, I'm obviously not going to name names, that's a bad thing to do, but there are a lot of teams, there are a lot of people, a lot of media content that floats around where someone will take a picture like this out of Iris and hit print screen, hit paste on Twitter and type in their, their little post and hit go and that's it. And it's that's fine, it it shows, you know, you've, you've got your sponsor's logos in there, it looks alright, but it's just not it's not special, it doesn't stand out at all, it's, you're not getting anything extra from it. Whereas if you're going to put something with a, you put a little bit of effort, I mean how long has this taken me? Not that long. Um, you know, going through the process and walking, walking you lot through it, obviously it makes things go a bit slow. If I was going to do this by myself, you could maybe bosh one of these out in 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and for the, for the quality that you get in your end image, it's totally worth it every time for me. Um, so there we are, I have rambled a lot, talked a lot of guff, hopefully a lot of it made sense, hopefully some of it made sense, and uh, it helps you. If it does, then please let me know, please show me some of your images, if you if you take inspiration from any of this, um, or use the filters, or use the blur technique, or do whatever, um, show me what you've done, I'd be, I'd be super keen, I'd be really happy if I can, if I can help at least one person out there get a, a really nice looking image out of iRacing or out of whatever sim that you use um, I would be chuffed uh, and I would have achieved my goal so uh, so with that thank you for watching and uh, I will see you next time